It just needs a little bit of oil. Right. I love it. I absolutely love it. But for negotiation purposes, I hate it. I absolutely hate it, Randy. It's awful. How much you give me? Uh, well, you said it's the Trans Am deal of a lifetime, so what's the deal of a lifetime? I figured 25. $25,000? Let's be honest, you probably bought it for 15, didn't you? Maybe. So how about I make, you can make a thousand bucks right now, 16,000, close to a deal of a lifetime. How yeah, about 17? 16,5? Come on. Okay, I'll let you have a 16,5. Obviously not the fastest car in the world, not the best handling by a lot, but it does feel really special. For a car that's over 40 years old, that has never been a part, this is actually fairly impressive. This is a simple, well-built car, and it seems to have survived. Unlike so many, especially in northern states where salt and rust is usually what took these things out, I actually have a personal connection to these Trans Ams. My parents, both in high school, their first cars were 77 and 78 Trans Ams. Those were the ones with the cat eyes, the different nose. Mmm. No turn signals. I didn't realize that before. Some of these gauges are not working. <laughs> but other than the electrical system being quite fried, it, it is working well. It's a good cruiser. Hey guys, stop for a second. Oh. That was bad. Oh, whoa, whoa, you're sleeping, dude. Oh, charming. Wonderful. And, oops. Okay. Yeah, that's hot. The hose seems okay. It just popped off. Maybe a new clamp. A lot of coolant. At least it made it two blocks. Oh, what a great start here. I think what's going on here is this radiator is a little short in the tooth actually because it's losing some of its bite for this clamp. So maybe I'll add a clamp or two. Whoa, that's not going anywhere. Fill it back up with coolant and Oh, the radiator's full, so now let's circulate it into the engine here. Just a few last burps, and then we should be off to the races. All right, I think we're good. I hope. All right, you dinosaur. All right, Trans Am, now that I own you, I'm going to drive you a little more gently. I think my triple clamp system will hold, but I should probably pull over somewhere and check. And I know the perfect place. It's air conditioned, unlike this Trans Am. I don't need no stinking wizard. This triple clamp method may not be the most elegant, but it is doing a great job of keeping the coolant inside the 6.6 .6 liter V8 under the hood. Big engine, but little power. 220 horsepower, but it does look and feel fast. So you're probably wondering, why so cheap? $16,500 does seem like a great deal for a muscle car of this caliber, especially with the movie tie-in. Smokey and the Bandit was the second highest grossing film in 1977 behind Star Wars. But that fame ended up being a gift and a curse. Once Smokey and the Bandit was released with Burt Reynolds and Sally Field racing across the South in a 77 special edition, just like the one behind me, everybody wanted a Trans Am. In 1978, they sold almost 100,000 of these cars, and in 1979, it was about the same number. So with high production numbers, you have less rarity and less value. And 79s were even less desirable because of the squared off headlight treatment. Still, this Trans Am does have some pretty cool stuff, like the very colorful screaming chicken on the hood that matches the interior, which has a really cool engine turn finish in the dashboard, and the shifter bezel. It's like holographic, kind of like a disco ball when the lights hit it. And this hidden fuel door neatly blended into the louvered taillight section. 
The other reason why these cars are so cheap is the performance. By 1979, we had reached the end of the glory days of the muscle car era, and that's because of performance robbing, emissions restrictions, and insurance mandates. Still, as they showed in the film 40 years ago, it doesn't matter how fast you go, but how good you look doing it. And I'm certainly no Burt Reynolds. Not at all, but maybe I can recreate some of that movie magic myself with my car. I just need a Smokey. Come on. Yeah. Backfired. Okay. I found a little patch of dirt here to make my own little movie here, kind of more uh, Dukes of Hazard probably than smoking the Bandit. No, Bandit did go off-road a few times. <laughs> is that the season one police car? It is. <laughs> He's after me. <laughs> kind of looks like Puberty Justice too. <laughs> For those who've forgotten, that's a 1988 Plymouth Grand Fury with a 318 V8 in it. I got a 6.6 .6 liter, so should be easy enough. Let's lose him. <laughs> this seat's not holding me in very well. I'm gonna hang on to the center console. Oh man, there's some tire rubbish there. Hang on. Oh jeez. He's on me like a tick on a turd. This thing can actually move. It's making a very alarming noise, though. In the rear, the tire's rubbing on something. But... Oh, no! Jeez. All right, we're trying to push his head trimming here, a little gardening. No. Oh. All right, let's try this. doing this in reverse, but let's flick it around here. And this Trans Am just won't stop. It's invincible. Go, Trans Am. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I lost him. He's gone. Yes. <laughs> oh, he's, he's out. He is out. <laughs> and we are out. Oh my goodness. 